In this video, I will be packaging Spotify executable installation file into MSI file using Wix. And the main reason for that is to deploy the software using group policy. I'm starting this video from my GitHub page and that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video. And I will leave the URL in the description down below. And if we scroll down a bit, you can find more of my videos that are related to this topic. For example, here you can find videos about installing and using Wix. Then we have few videos about Windows registry. This is quite important because Spotify installation is a bit tricky. That's because Spotify needs to be installed for each user on the computer. And also it, the installation needs to be executed by the user. So to achieve that, we'll be using Windows functionality called run once and active setup. So if you want more details on how everything works, you can check out the videos right here. Then I have a video about PSExec. And this is only to test the MSI file that we will be creating. Basically, I will be installing it under the system account to make sure that it works no matter what user I'm using to deploy the software. Because most of the software deployment tools are using system account to deploy the software. So now let's talk about a bit how the MSI file will work. Because the MSI file itself will not be installing the software. It will only prepare the computer for the software installation for each user on the computer during the login process. And it will achieve it by performing two steps. One of them by placing the executable in this folder right here in the C program data folder. And that's because all the users on the computer will be able to execute the executable from this directory. And then it will be creating an active setup registry key. And the installation will work like this. And the user will sign into the computer. Active setup will create run once registry entry. Then the user desktop will load. And after that, run once will start software installation. And this process will happen on for all of the users on the computer once during the login process. And also it will happen for users that will be creating in the future. And I understand if it looks a bit messy, but so far this is the best solution that I found to deal with the software of this type. And now let's start creating our MSI package. And for that, first we need to download Spotify. And here I have few links. If I click on the first one, it brings us to the download page for Spotify. And here we can click download directly from Spotify and it should start the download process. If I go to my downloads folder, we can see that we have our Spotify executable, but this one is a very small one. And this is because this is not a full setup. Uh, it will be downloading all the necessary files that it needs for the installation during the installation process. And this is bad because that means that our computer, when run once will start the installation, needs to have access to the internet. And if it doesn't have internet, the installation will fail for that user. So instead, I will go back to my GitHub page and here I have another link. And this one is Spotify offline installer. If I click on it, the problem is that it automatically starts the download. And that's because I was not able to find this installation file in the Spotify download page. And I found it uh, in Spotify forums posted by some moderator. And you should not be trusting links like this and you should not be clicking them or downloading and especially installing anything from them. So you should not, but if you want, you can, but you really shouldn't. Anyways, I will be using this executable. And if I go back to my downloads folder, you can see that this time I have Spotify full setup.exe. And this time it's quite larger than the previous one. And that's because this executable has all the necessary files that it needs for the installation. And that means that our computer doesn't need access to the internet during the installation process. And the last thing that we need now is a Wix configuration file. So for that, I will go back to my GitHub page. And here I have a few files. One of them is called Spotify. Basically, this is already finished a configuration file. You can look at it if you want to. But for this video, I will be using this one that's called template. I will click on it. Then I will click on the button that I have here and it will download the file for me. Then I will go back to my downloads folder. And here I have the Wix configuration file. So first step that I will take is I will rename it. So I will right click and select rename and I will rename it Spotify and press enter. And now I will right click once again and open it with Visual Studio Code. 
And as you can see, it's an XML file. Basically, it's instructions for Wix on how to package the MSI file for us. And it can get quite complicated, and that's why I like to create templates and then reuse them for my software deployment projects. And in this file, we currently only care about this part right here. Basically, we need to fill in the necessary information that is unique to Spotify installation. And first, we need to name our package. So I will name it Spotify installer. Then for exe, we need to provide the executable name that we want to use. So I will go to my downloads folder, right click on the executable that I will be using. I will select full name that includes the extension because that's important. I will copy the name, then I will go back to my Visual Studio and paste in the value here. Make sure that you also have the extension. Then we need to provide a silent switch. Basically, we want the installation for Spotify to happen silently so that it doesn't interrupt our users. And if I go back to my GitHub page, we have the silent switch for Spotify right here. So I will copy it, go back to Visual Studio and paste in the value. Then we need to provide the path. Basically, it's the path where we currently have our executable. So for me, it's the D drive and then it's the downloads folder. I'm sure that the location for you is a bit different. Then here we need to provide a version number. And this version number is for this MSI package and not for the software. In most cases, I like to keep software and MSI package versions the same. But for this video, I will give it the value of 1.0.0. .0. And then we need to provide a publisher. This is not that necessary, but this field, it, well, it's not important, but it's a mandatory field. So for the publisher, I will enter, let's do automation. And then we need to provide a unique identifier for this package. And we can generate it by using PowerShell. So once again, back to the GitHub page, and here I have a PowerShell command. So I will copy the PowerShell command, open my terminal. Uh, you can use the normal PowerShell terminal also. Paste in the command, press enter. And as you can see, every time that I use this command, I get a new unique identifier. And it's called quit. So I will select one of them and then copy the value. Go back to Visual Studio Code, paste in the value. And that's basically it. We finished uh, configuring our configuration file for Wix. Now I will save the file and close the window. And now we want to change our directory in our command line to where we have our configuration file and the executable. So for me, it's the D drive and downloads folder. So I will type CD, D drive, and then downloads and press enter. If I type there, I can see my Wix configuration file and all the executables that I have. So to build the MSI package, we only need to type Wix, build, and then provide uh, the name of our Wix configuration file. So it's Spotify.wxs and press enter. And if we go back to the downloads folder and wait a bit, we can see that the MSI file for us was created. And the last thing that we need to do is to see if this MSI file is working. So I will right click on it and then click copy because now I will go to my VMware workstation where I have a virtual machine prepared. And here I have this software folder and I will paste in the MSI file into this folder. Also in the same folder, I have this PS exec executable. Like I said, I will be performing the installation using a system account. So the next step is to open a command line. I will go to staff menu, type CMD and run it as administrator and yes. Now we want to change the location in our terminal to the location where we have our files. So I will click here and copy the location. Then I will type CD, paste in the location and press enter. If I type there, we can see our files right here. We see our PSXEC executable and Spotify MSI file. And if I type command who am I, we can see that this uh, CMD window is running under the user admin. 
So we want to change that. And for that, I will be using psexec. So I will type the executable name psexec. And then I will type minus i for interactive, minus s for system user. And then we need to type the process that we want to start. So I want to start another CMD window. So I will type CMD. I will agree with the license terms. And we have another window. But this time if I type who, who am I, it is saying that I am in the authority system. So basically everything that I am doing in this window, I am doing it as a system account. So once again, we want to change the directory where we have our executables. So I will type cd, paste in the directory and press enter. If I type there once more, we can see our files again. So to start the installation, I will be using, first I will be typing cmd slash c. This is not necessary, but it allows us to see when the installation is finished just by looking at the command line. And then I will type the msi file name. So it's spotify.msi and then slash quen. Uh, for the silent installation and I will press enter and the installation happened almost instantly and as you can see the MSI file was installed but we still don't have Spotify and that's because like I said this MSI file is not installing the software but it's preparing computer for the software installation so let's look around and see what happened so first let's check our uh, program list so for that I will press windows key and R on my keyboard, wrong button, and it opens up run, and I will try type control, and then uninstall our program. And as you can see, we don't have Spotify, but we have the Spotify installer that is published by Let's Do Automation, and the version number is here. So the MSI file has been installed successfully. Now let's check if the file was deployed also successfully. So for that, I will go to C slash program data. And here we have this packages file, I mean folder. I will click on it. We see another folder this time. We see the grid of the package. I will click on it. And here we have our installation file for Spotify. So now let's check the registry. And for that, I will go to start menu, type reg edit and run as administrator. Yes. And now I want to go to local machine, software, and WoW64 node, and Microsoft active setup and installed components. And here we are looking for this grid right here. So ADF and let's Try to quickly find it. And here it is. And as you can see, we have a few registry entries. One of them is Spotify installer, the default one. And then we have stuff path. Basically, this va the value of the stuff path will be executed during logon for each user on this computer, even the users that we will be creating in the future until this registry key is deleted. So everything seems to be fine. So now I will close all the windows. And then I will sign out from this user and let's see what happens. And then I will sign back in. I will try to open the task manager and see if I can see what's going on, but I was not quick enough. As you can see, Spotify successfully installed and started for us. And this installation of Spotify will happen for each user on the computer once until somebody deletes the MSI file or deletes the active setup registry key. And that's it for this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more and see you in the next one.